My name is John Brownstein. I'm an epidemiologist and chief innovation officer at Boston Children's Hospital, and I'm one of the co-founders of COVID Near You. So right now, with coronavirus, we're at over 60,000 deaths, millions of cases. The reality is that we've been flying blind with really understanding how this virus emerged in the country and how it's really spread. Because with lack of testing, we have a very limited view on the numbers of cases, especially the numbers of cases in the community. So we try to fill in these blanks and utilize these new sources of information, such as the crowdsourcing work we're doing with COVID Near You. COVID Near You is a website that you can use on your computer or your mobile phone to input your illness or whether you're healthy. If you're feeling well, you report that and then just give some basic information about your age and location, and that's it. it takes a few seconds. If you're not well, then it throws you into a set of questions about your symptoms, whether you saw a healthcare provider, whether you got tested for coronavirus, not more than another five, six questions. Those help us really understand the symptomology, to understand sort of health-seeking behavior, and ultimately gives us the insight that we need to really crowdsource illness across the country. Essentially what we're doing is providing a map to the end user. So it's not just about collecting data, but it's about providing data back to users. So we have a map that shows uh, individuals who have, have tested positive, those who essentially are reporting illness. The data that we provide on the website is fully aggregated, anonymized, and gives uh, insights at a zip code level for people to see what's being reported around them. We're approaching about 600,000 people uh, that have reported in the United States, another 500,000 in Canada, and we're thinking about expansion or collaborating with other countries that are doing these kind of surveillance efforts. Our data is already giving some important uh, insights. So clearly we're seeing the outbreaks occurring in large metropolitan areas. But as the events unfold, we know that people are leaving those areas and going to outlying areas. People that might have second homes or family members, places like Cape Cod or Long Island. And what we're seeing is increased illness happening in those communities. And that's through the data that's being collected through crowdsourcing. Again, very challenging to have that level of granularity for the country through testing data, but we're already getting these emerging signals from people reporting illness directly into COVID near you. So clearly people are gonna have concerns about reporting into systems like these, right? The idea that there's some uh, sensitive information. We have a responsibility to protect that information, to store it properly. It's all in the name of providing better monitoring and better research to, to sort of combat this, this virus. The value of what we're doing depends on people engaging, and we need the data from a broad range of demographics and health status. Those that are most vulnerable to coronavirus are the ones that we really would love to participate. Clearly, that's gonna give us the data that we need to understand what is happening in the community. This pandemic has demonstrated an incredible amount of interest in technology and the direct engagement of the public. You know, our tools have never seen this, this much activity. We say putting the public back in public health, it's really unfolding during coronavirus. There's a concern, of course, that there's a the crazy pace that's happening right now, and then maybe that activity will go away. From a public health perspective, we're so appreciative of all this work that's gone into it, but we hope that it sort of sustains and that interest both from the tech side and also the public uh, continues because this is not the last uh, pandemic that we're gonna see. There are many other pathogens out there, uh, new respiratory viruses that are lurking that clearly could jump into human populations. And so we need these technologies and this participation for the future uh, pandemics that inevitably we'll see.